What's going on everybody and welcome to part four of the Python 3 basics tutorial. In this tutorial we are making uh, a tic-tac-toe in order with Python in order to learn the Python 3 basics. Where we left off we've got our you know our, our, our grid that is going to be our tic-tac-toe sort of game map and now what we want to do is visualize for the user um, a way for them to to be able to say, hey, I want to play on such and such row and such and such column or, you know, such and such column or such and such row and so on. So there's a few options that we have from easy to hard <laughs> that we could do. But basically, we probably want to have like numbers or letters at the top and then maybe numbers or letters on the side. So 1A or 1-1 one, one or, or, or whatever. So, um, so the first thing is like, hey, what if we just wanted to like print some numbers up at the top? How might we, how might we get around doing that? Well, one option is super simple. Uh, we could just simply do like a print statement and say uh, zero, one, two. Now it's not gonna be lined just right. So let's just run it really quick. Okay, so we probably really just need one space here. Let's run it again. And that appears to be pretty well aligned. So if you wanted to move 0, 1, 2, um, you know, for the actual row name, um, or actually this would be a column name, uh, you could specify that column by 0, 1, or 2. Now what about on the other side? Like how would we do it over here, right? Because in, it's in this print row that we would need the number. Well, there's a variety of things that we could do. So one of the ways a basic programmer might do this is with a starting with like some sort of counter. So you could say count equals zero. And then in print, you can continue to just print many things um, at a time. So print row, well, you could instead print, um, we could print count comma row. Uh, so this will print count, add a space, and then print the row. So for example, if I just run this now, it's you know all zeros, and we can see our, our top thing is messed up. So let's add uh, let's probably two more spaces there that should do it. Yep. So now, how can we get count to go up? Well, all we need to do is do count, um, and you could say count equals count plus one. That's one way you could do it, and so we could run that real quick and see okay zero one two on that left hand side for the, each uh, each row. The other option is a slightly more condensed uh, plus equals one. This does the exact same thing as count equals count plus one. Okay, pretty cool. Now this is not really the best way to do it uh, in terms of you know being the best Python programmer you could be, but it does get the job done. That said, Python comes with a huge assortment of what are called built-in functions. So let's do Python 3 built-in functions. And let's just click on that, that first one. And you can see here, there's quite a few built-in functions. Each one does something special from abs, which is just absolute value, all the way down to, I'm gonna skip import and just do zip. Zip is a way to, at least usually what you do with zip is combine a couple of lists. Uh, we, we can, we, I don't, we might use zip later, but anyways, all of these are super useful, but these built-in functions, most of them are written in Python. And so you don't have to know them. So like I was saying before, built-in functions are like more tools that you can add to your tool set. Um, but do you need them? No, you don't have to learn every single one. But once in a while, just like I said before, you know, you might want to come and look at the built-in functions. Just get reminded at um, what all is available to you and maybe try to learn a new one once in a while or something. And there's really, there is a lot here, but it doesn't take long to, to learn what all of these do. So anyway, one of the built-in ones that we're going to use is enumerate. We could click on it. We can learn more. Um, but basically all it does is it iterates as you iterate over something, enumerate returns both the index value and the value of the thing you're iterating over. Now an index value is the thing in a list. So to let's just write it out first, I think. Um, I'm trying to decide which would be better. I don't know if I'm gonna write it out or not. Um, I think I will, and then maybe delete it all. That's probably what we'll do. So, so you can do for count comma row in enumerate game 
And then let's get rid of this count here. And then we'll get rid of this count here. So now we're going to iterate over the rows in game. Now iterating, now what is each row in game? Remember, each row is this little bit, this bit, and this bit. And then you could iterate over the values in the rows as well. And I could show that in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and print this one out. As you can see, we have the same thing. So um, one thing to take note of is initially your index value starts at zero. Everything in programming starts at zero, not this is row one, two, three. This is row zero, row one, row two. So sometimes you'll hear me refer to things as the firsteth element because it's not the first element, it's the firsteth element, <laughs> so or the zeroth element, and, and so on. So sometimes I'll make those distinctions just because it can sometimes get confusing. But it really, most of the time I refer to something, I'm referring to its index value. So, um, so those are, at least that's one of the built-in functions um, in, uh, in Python. So um, just to show you what I meant too, uh, sometimes this stuff can be hard to visualize at first. I'm sure many of you guys already have it. You understand as you iterate over the rows. Okay, cool, I've got that. Well, but you also could iterate over the uh, elements in each, because this is a list of lists. So when we do a for something in that list of lists, you've got list one and then the list two. So when you iterate over a list of lists, the first thing that you're iterating over is the lists. But if you, you could take that further and iterate over the items in those lists with just another four. So um, as a quick note, if you wanna leave something in your code or write something in your code, you can do what's called a comment. A single line comment is a pound or a hashtag depending on when you were born. So, so um, anyways, uh, that's how you comment something out. A comment is just for people reading your code, you to take notes. The programming language doesn't care what you put in there. It doesn't have to be Python 3 syntax. You can put anything in a comment. Um, so that's a single line comment. If you wanna make multi-line comments, you can use uh, triple quotes, multi-line comment. That's a multi-line comment. So anyways, now that we've commented those things out, we won't see them anymore. So now uh, let's instead say for item in row, because remember row being a temporary value right now, um, it's the store of like, for example, this or this. It's all zeros, but you could iterate over them and print item. And as you can see, it's just a bunch of zeros, <laughs> nothing special. Anyways, that's, I think that's a good spot for us to stop. Um, I am going to now get rid of our comment, get rid of this, get rid of this, and this will now throw an error. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And let me make sure everything looks correct. It does. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is also at some point we probably should make this like a B, C, or something like that. I think that starts to make a little more sense. Um, but you can do whatever you want. I just think that's probably less likely to cause problems later, but we'll talk about it. So anyways, um, I'm gonna leave it here. And now moving forward, we've at least got a game map so I can run it again. We now know a user could say, okay, I wanna play A0 or B2. So if we typed in, you know, it's like if we allow input from the user and they say B2, we can all agree that's gonna be that spot right there. So what we need to start being able to do is use our programming to somehow manipulate that exact spot on the, on the game board, both so we can do analysis with our programming to decide, hey, has anybody won? Um, can they even move there? Uh, but also to visualize it for the user after they've made the move. So uh, that's going to require indexing and, and might as well cover slices at the same time. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Uh, join the Discord. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys and girls in the next video.